I am currently booted into the text-based uh, version of Slitez. It's an 8 megabyte ISO, uh, and today we're going to show how to uh, remaster and create your own custom version of Slitez that you can install to a CD, USB drive, uh, CD or USB flash drive. Uh, I'm going to log in as root with the username root and the default password of root. And we are going to use a program called Tazlito, I would believe how is how you say that. And Tazlito allows you to uh, basically remaster the CD and it has lots of options. So if you just type in Tazlito and hit enter, you'll see all the options here. You can hit shift and up page to go up and look at all of them. Um, but the option we are going to use today, we are going to use the very basic write ISO. This is going to basically take your full file system, including your home directory. So if you've created a user and put files in their home directory, that user and its home directory will be added to the live CD. Um, so all I have to do is type in Tazlito space write ISO and we can hit enter at this point and it'll ask you if you want to remove your sound card and screen configurations yes no or exit which cancels it out and just depending on what you're going to do if you're going to use this on the same machine uh, basically you would want to keep them but if you're just going to be bringing it from machine to machine might as well remove them so uh, do you wish to remove the sound card a uh, default is no and we'll just choose that, but uh, in most cases I would probably pick yes, but I don't think it's a big deal either way. Uh, and so here we go. It doesn't take very long. There it's done. It asks if you want to burn the ISO to a CD-ROM. Default is just exit, so I'm going to choose that. We're not going to burn to a CD-ROM right now. You can see right here it created a ISO in your home directory, or actually it's not your home directory. It's a user Slitaz, so home Slitaz distros and ISO called Slitaz ISO. But to notice that it's 16 megabytes, that's double the size of the original ISO. Uh, and the reason for that is that we didn't compress the image. So you can create a CD without compressing it, which might speed up boot, boot times slightly, I guess. But, um, but obviously it makes it a much larger image. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to type in Slitaz, uh, or sorry, uh, Tazlito clean-distro and that will clean up all the files that you, you just created when you ran the right ISO and it will remove the ISO. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, Tazlito right ISO command again, but this time we're going to tell it after that gzip and it will use gzip to compress the image. So let's do that. We'll hit enter. Once again, it asks about your sound and screen configurations. I'm just going to go with the default. Uh, no, don't remove them. And here we can see it takes a little bit longer before it was basically like a boom and you had an image. This time it's going and you can see how big your file system's getting. Now we got a file system that is six megabytes but then there's some other files needed for the CD to boot properly and basically our final ISO is 9 megabytes, still a megabyte larger which if you've added stuff, yeah your image is going to be bigger but we haven't added anything so why are we getting this larger image? Uh, I'm also going to hit enter here to exit, I'm not going to burn the CD and that's because there's two types of compression that you can choose from so once again let me run uh, Tazlito clean distro and it'll remove all those temp files and ISO it just created. And this time I'm going to run the same command, but instead of gzip, we're going to use lzma. We'll hit enter. I will hit enter again here, choose the same option, and it is creating the file system. You can see we're at one megabyte here, compression, two and basically it's doing the same thing as before but instead of using gzip it's using lzma which is just a different type of compression and you can see uh, it created a 8 megabyte ISO this time we'll hit enter to exit out of that and the reason for that is that lzma uh, from my understanding basically will compress uh, a smaller compression but it might slow down your boot time once again very slightly I don't know if it will make that big of a difference um, but uh, as far as the 
distro size, we're only working with, with a very small distro here. If you were to add a lot of stuff, install a lot of programs, instead of just being one megabyte, you might save yourself 10 or 15 or 20. You might save yourself a lot of space, depending on what it is you've installed, you know, and whether it's already compressed or not. Um, so that is how uh, you can create ISOs, your own custom ISOs. Obviously, just in, you know logging in and doing it like I just did is kind of pointless because you're creating an ISO that you already have. But if you customize it, if you add, let's say, you know, running in text mode, so you're thinking maybe server type stuff, you can add uh, Apache web server or an FTP server or something like that and get it all set up. And then you can recompress your, your ISO. And now you have a portable server you can fit in your pocket on a business card size CD, which is just a, a great thing to be able to have. Uh, another thing we can do. Uh, basically going like before, we'll use uh, Taslito, write ISO, uh, I'll use uh, gzip in this case, and I'll just uh, call it custom.iso. And basically it asks you the same questions here, and it will compress it, but the difference this time is instead of just creating an ISO called slitaz under home slitaz distro slitaz.iso, um, it, oh, I, I guess you don't have to type the ISO name, so I got .iso, .iso. Um, it creates it under a custom name, uh, and that way you can, I guess if you wanted to, you know, one, you probably want to give it a custom name, um, but if you were going to be compressing it more than once, I mean, creating more than one while you're in here, you can uh, rename it whatever you want. But I just thought I'd mention that, that you can add the name there and name it whatever you want. Now, like I said, there are a lot of options and I will go over some of these options in the future I just wanted to go over the base uh, riot right ISO because I think a lot of people who are just using this for personal use and you're not going to be distributing it um, will probably want their home directory in there and this is just the simplest way to do it so uh, thanks for watching and visit filmsbychris.com for more video tutorials on Linux and other open source stuff and keep watching in this series of tutorials on Slitaz text mode. Have a great day.